She first performed as a baby, taken onto the London stage by her proud grandmother when she was just a few weeks old. Since then, Glynis Johns has been a bikini-clad pin-up, a famous character actor, an Oscar nominee, and a BAFTA award winner. The British actress has appeared in countless films, being perhaps best remembered for starring in Mary Poppins, alongside everyone from David Niven to Sandra Bullock, and later in much-loved TV shows like Batman, Scooby-Doo, and Cheers. What's most remarkable is that her stage debut as a baby occurred 100 years ago this autumn, which means she is fast approaching her centenary. And, since the deaths in recent years of Zsa Zsa Gabor and Olivia de Havilland, she's acceded to the unofficial role of the world's oldest living screen star. Among other accolades, in 1960, she was Oscar-nominated for Best Supporting Actress in the Australian outback drama The Sundowners, starring Robert Mitchum, Deborah Kerr, and Peter Ustinov. Now there are growing calls for her incredible career and longevity to be marked with a damnhood. As her grandson Thomas Forwood told the Daily Express, Glynn has had simply the most extraordinary career. It would be fitting to mark that formally. The actress and dancer, now retired, lives in a residential care home in Beverly Hills, California, and stopped giving interviews when she reached her 90s, but she has a raft of fans who are happy to sing her praises. Among them is Labour MP Chris Bryant, who has held the shadow brief for both arts and culture and media and sport. He summed up her decades in film and TV, saying, What a star Glynis Johns is, a lifetime ambassador for the creative arts in the UK and particularly Wales. Mr Bryant, who's run the constituency is close to Pembroke, where the star's family came from, added, Glynis's CV stands up strongly when compared to fellow actors of her generation and younger like Angela Lansbury. Judy Dench, Joan Collins, and Maggie Smith, who all received damnhoods, so it would be nice if the government could make the same gesture for her as she turns 100. She would certainly be a popular appointment in royal circles, she met members of the royal family many times, including the new Queen Elizabeth at a premiere for Rob Roy in October 1953. Glynis whose 100th birthday falls later this year on October 5th, was actually born in South Africa, where her parents were on tour, but was back in England for that auspicious stage debut just a few weeks later. Don't miss! Kira Starmer to hand vote to EU nationals if Labour wins next election, latest, entitled Idiots are real reason you can't get through to a doctor GP receptionist, latest, Zelensky breaks silence after explosive plan to strike Russia leaked, latest, her father was a touring actor at the time. Proud Welshman Mervyn Johns was a household name actor in the early years of British cinema, and Glynis's mother was a concert pianist. That grandmother who took her on stage was a virtuoso violinist. Glynis was clearly destined to perform, it was in her genes. With her fizzing energy, bright eye charm and signature husky voice, she would go on to be a staple star of stage, film and TV for decades. By the age of five, she had joined the London School of Ballet and won a series of gold medals. In the class two years below her was Angela Lansbury, future star of Murder She Wrote, who died last year aged 96. By eight, Glynis had been cast in her first West End play and would go on to perform as a child star throughout the 1930s at a number of London theatres still welcoming audiences to this day, The Old Vic, The Garrick, The Phoenix, and Wyndham's. She made her film debut in 1938 in the Yorkshire drama South Riding, which was remade for television in 2011. 
Other film parts followed, including the 1939 thriller On the Night of the Fire, in which she starred opposite a smoldering Ralph Richardson. The Second World War didn't slow her down, she worked steadily throughout it, notably in the highly regarded 1944 ghost story The Halfway House, in which she appeared with her father. A year later she was in the drama Perfect Strangers, alongside Deborah Kerr, with a youthful Roger Moore playing a minor role. She also worked on the West End stage, even as German bombs fell around it. One play ran for over two years, all throughout the Blitz. By the end of the 40s, she was becoming one of the UK's most recognizable and popular stars, a status cemented by her role, decades before Daryl Hannah did the same in Splash, as a mermaid in the proto-romcom, Miranda. It was popular enough at the box office to spawn a sequel, Helter Skelter. In Dear Mr. Prohack in 1951, she was the love interest of Dirk Bogard. This was to lead to a twist in the tale in her own personal life, her husband Anthony Forwood would move in with Bogart as his a lover the following year, of which more later. Her career flourished during the 50s in countless films in both the UK and Hollywood, alongside the biggest stars of the day, James Stewart, Marlene Dietrich, Frank Sinatra, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., David Niven, Danny Kaye, Lana Turner, Jack Hawkins, Richard Todd, Richard Attenborough, Alec Guinness, and Diana Doors. The part she is probably best known for these days came in 1964 when she played the suffragette matriarch Winifred Banks in Mary Poppins, opposite David Tomlinson, Julie Andrews, and Dick Van Dyke. The film was a huge hit and her turn, including the song Sister Suffragette, was highly praised. By now firmly US-based, she began to get more and more television work. When she briefly returned to the West End in 1966, she was hailed by a prominent impresario as London theatre's favourite daughter. She was furiously busy throughout the 70s. Standouts included a role in the original cast for hit musical A Little Night Music. Stephen Sondheim wrote his most famous song, the classic Send in the Clowns, with her in mind and it would become her theme tune. The part won her a Tony. Sondheim said her voice had the quality of a rumpled bed which the song demanded. She also appeared alongside Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor in a film version of Under Milkwood, celebrating her Welsh heritage. More film, TV and stage work followed in the 80s. She played the mother of Shelley Long's character Diane in Cheers, and appeared alongside her former schoolmate Lansbury in Murder She Wrote. It was only in the 90s that she finally began to wind down her acting, yet she still starred in The West End, on Broadway and in grandmother roles in several films. Her final film roles came in While You Were Sleeping, in 1995, opposite Sandra Bullock and Bill Pullman, and the 1999 film Superstar, a comedy which also featured Will Ferrell. Perhaps a fitting final role as she had by now long established herself as a superstar. Glynn is married four times and outlived every husband as well as her only son. Her closest surviving relative is her only grandchild, Thomas Forwood, 48, now a Paris-based screenwriter who grew up with her as his grandmother, and Bogart as a de facto grandfather. My grandmother had the most incredible career over many decades and produced this vast body of work, he told the Daily Express. There's so much of it. I've only seen a fraction of it myself. But I'm immensely proud of her.
She lives in a retirement home in Beverly Hills and stepped back from public life entirely a decade or so ago and now lives very quietly. She's still quite robust physically and has something of her old spirit about her, she still has a wonderful sense of humor. Thomas continues, it was strange growing up and saying to my friends, oh my grandma was in Batman. Or seeing her in Mary Poppins. Of course, she came across as supremely confident, but in private she suffered quite crippling stage fright that she never really got over, only managed, so that makes her career even more remarkable. Film writer Richard Lux says, Glynis was my constant companion throughout my early days as a movie fan. The simple fact of the matter is that, whenever Ms. Johns is on screen, the picture belongs to her. And whenever she's off camera, we long for her return. Even in one of her final major films, 1994's The Ref, she steals the picture from under the feet of its nominal leads Kevin Spacey, Dennis Leary, and Judy Davis. Sarah Cronin Stanley, head of Talking Pictures TV, the channel which specializes in screening older British films, says Johns remains one of the most popular stars among their audience. Glynis is an icon of British cinema and all the feedback we get confirms that she's enduringly popular. She started out as a stage actress and some people can't manage the transition from that to screen because they almost overdo it, but Glynis could tell you everything with just a pointed glance or a raised eyebrow. We're really proud to be able to screen a number of her films, including a couple of my favorites, including Halfway House, in which she appears alongside her father, and one of her earliest films, Under Your Hat in which she dances and sings, a reminder of just how multi-talented Glynis was. Ms. Cronin Stanley is also keen for Glynis to receive a damn hood. She added, I think it would be a marvelous gesture if the new king could honor her while she is still with us. <laughs>